Okay, welcome to uh, Human Computer Interaction module. So this is AC32005 and AC52013. Uh, so the purpose of this video is just to give you an introduction to the module, give you an introduction to what's expected of you, what you can expect of me, and maybe some kind of overview of the sort of things that we're going to be looking at as we progress in the module. So for anyone who hasn't met me before, my name's Rachel. I um, a researcher in HCI UX. I run the UX lab in uh, the University of Dundee, so I run it here. Uh, myself and Mike Crab run that. Um, and I've just put my contact details there, so if you want to email me, drop me an email. I'm in 209 in the QMB, uh, so that's the second floor at the very back. So if anyone's got any questions as the module progresses, you want to drop me an email, you've got any comments, uh, then uh, email or pop up to my office is the easiest way to get hold of me. So in this course, we should have um, all of our undergraduate applied computing. There is also a various amount of MSc students in the module. So some will be um, on our computing courses. Some will be from uh, psychology doing the AAC course, and some will be from engineering doing design for healthcare and assistive technologies. So what I hope that brings us is it brings us a nice perspective of all of the different types of approaches that we can take. Um, and we can kind of learn from each other and learn maybe in the application of what we've what we're going to look at. How do we take that research of HCI and then apply that um, in different areas like AAC or healthcare? So timetable for the module is generally set. We've got a one hour lecture on a Tuesday. We've got a two hour lecture on a Thursday and the labs a three hour slot on a Thursday lunchtime afternoon. There will be the odd week when that changes, so please check your uh, personal timetable that should be in your uh, calendars. Um, and you can also look at timetable.dundee.ac, no, timetable.dundee.ac.uk. Have a look on there and just double check for the odd weeks that it changes. We have a reading list, so if you go to the module in My Dundee, you'll see that there's a reading list uh, for HCI, it is called, the book's called Human Computer Interaction, an Empirical Research Perspective. Uh, so we are actually interested in some of the more applied parts of that book, so we're not going to use it all. Um, in particular, we're going to use it for the history of HCI and human factors and of understanding actually what humans are and are not capable of. <clears throat> if anyone is interested, particularly in the research part, it's a very good book. Uh, looking at research with human participants, uh, looking at research in terms of how to make sure that what you are trying to find out, you set up your experiment up properly so that you do actually find out. Uh, so in terms of looking forward to projects, either summer projects for MSCs or next year under, you know, final year projects for the third years, that's going to be a book you want to come back to when you're starting to look and see whether or not whatever you create is better than what already exists, <clears throat> that's going to be a good uh, a good starting point for you to give you an idea of just what's possible. Uh, so I think it's interesting. Um, if anyone wants to chat about it, let me know. So if there's anyone around who requires additional support, um, please let me know. I have access to anyone who has uh, special teaching requirements you know, extra time for exams, things around presentations and things of that nature I have access to. If anyone wants to discuss anything with me specifically, then let me know. If anyone thinks that they should have um, additional teaching requirements, but you've not been to see disability services, um, that's the link there. So you can go and have a chat with them and just any general inquiries, the inquiry centre is always available. <clears throat> so that includes things like if you require counselling, if you require anything to do with finance, anything to do with accommodation, start off at the inquiry centre. <coughs> so how is the module assessed? There are two assignments as the module progresses and then a final exam. So both assignments are group assignments and they're worth 25% each, uh, percent each, and then the final exam is worth 50%. So those two assignments are 
the history of HCI, which is going to be, you'll be allocated in groups of three. You'll be allocated a, a moment in history or a specific uh, technology or person. And you'll be asked to look at it from a historical point of view. What did they add to the field of HCI? What actually happened? What lessons have we learned from that? How has it progressed into perhaps technologies that we know of today? And you'll be given a choice of which group you're going to be in. You'll be given a choice of which technology you want to look at. And then there'll be a poster session. So one of the lab sessions we will set up where everyone kind of stands beside their posters and some others can go around and have a look and chat to them and so on. So this is an interesting way, I think, of replacing just, you know, me telling you about it. So everyone should be an expert in one particular area of the history of HCI by the end of that assignment. The second assignment is looking towards accessibility. So we're using a WCAG web audit. So that's the Web Consortium Accessibility Guidelines. And this is an industry standard report. If you were to work in accessibility or web development, you might be asked to produce such a report. And basically, we're looking to see whether websites are accessible to people with disabilities. And that kind of fits into a larger theme of accessibility that we have within HCI. And then the final exam is a combination of shorter answer questions and longer essay style questions. I'll give you sample questions as we go through the module so that you can kind of test your knowledge as we go, uh, but that's worth 50% at the end. <coughs> so HCI is <coughs> perhaps different to other classes that you've had in that HCI, there is no real set answer a lot of the time, and that's because we're exploring. HCI is a fairly well-established field, but there are many unanswered questions. And as technology evolves, those unanswered questions increase. So what we are trying to do is give you the skills for you to go out and explore the field and come to your own conclusion about a lot of things. So you're going to need to take notes. Um, my slides will have the basic of information, but I'm not going to have it all. Uh, so there might be some kind of additional things that I drop in uh, so you can take notes on them. You're going to have to read. So there will be designated reading as we go through. Some of that will be textbook reading. Some of that will be research papers. And if you don't do that, you're not going to get most out of the class. So my advice is to please do the reading. And also, once the lectures happen, go and read a bit more around it. Because what I'm going to present to you is my experience and my opinion. So you have to go and read more widely to get other points of view. And the final thing is to ask questions. If you don't understand why something's happened, you want to ask a question, you want to challenge my view on something, like I'd appreciate that. It's much more interesting and engaging for everyone if we can have that kind of discussion as we go through. And that discussion only happens if you read beforehand. So those two are very, very well connected. <clears throat> now, what is HCI? So this is the first job that you have to do. Um, I want you to go and I want you to Google what is HCI, uh, because what you're going to see from this class is one part of HCI. You're going to see one view, one lens, one filter, and it's going to be the Dundee view of what we do in HCI. So HCI is way bigger than this module. <coughs> so at the very surface, HCI is human-computer interaction, right? So it's the interaction between humans and computers. What we mean by computer is like blown up in the last decade. It's, it's not a mouse and a keyboard anymore, which was the very first kind of human subject studies was how do people type? You know, how do people use a mouse? How can we make that more efficient? Now you've got all this ubiquitous stuff you've got smart homes, you've got things that are, uh, you wear them, you've got things that are AR, you've got things that don't have that traditional interface anymore, that don't have that traditional input output that you would have seen from computers and laptops from before. So how humans interact with those is very different and very variable and it's 
no longer just about okay what what is my ability as a person how fast can i type that's a very traditional hci view but now we want to take into different societies and cultures so everyone has some kind of cultural identity and does that make a difference so does it make a difference if someone's from china versus scotland in terms of how they would accept or use some technology yes um the ethics so just because technology can do something should it so all of these things form part of the kind of human view of computers and our interaction with them so if you go and google um just hci you will get a whole uh bunch of kind of summaries of what is hci but the interesting part i think is see if you click on images so you're going to get this kind of uh so what is hci and all the parts of it that make it up so some of these we know straight away yes psychology probably plays a part right because we uh, we need to use our cognition and our brain. We need to perceive things in order to recognize that it exists. Uh, there's some computer science, which is hopefully why most of you are here. In order to under create new technology, we need computer scientists, but we need HCI experts to make useful technology. Uh, there's some kind of social psychology in there. There's ergonomics and human factors. That's your traditional typing speed type study uh, so, so you'll find a whole bunch of these you know there's just they go on and on and on and on uh, so each of these is somebody's view of what hci is and hopefully throughout the module you'll get a sense of what my view is um, but also you'll be able to sort of form your own your own view as we go uh, what we will uh, do in the module is if I just log into my Dundee, get to the HCI course. So if you go to module information, you will see a timetable. That timetable is for this year. Um, it may it may change as we go through because um, that's a live document, which I'll update as I continue. Uh, it's still got some kind of notes here for me. Um, you know whether or not I'm going to be here so I'm not here for week four uh, so there's no scheduled classes for that so the videos obviously you've got to this one from my Dundee uh, we will do some information on research community we'll start looking at that how to make a poster um, and then the poster session so that's the first assignment that's going to be uh, the Thursday lab session of week six You'll need to hand it in, the poster itself, on the Monday so that I can get them all printed before the Thursday, just so that I'm taking on that expense and not you. And we're going to have some guest sessions, so we're going to look at accessibility within research and then we've got a guest lecture from outside. Uh, Jane Wilson from Oracle is going to come in and talk about how she uses accessibility within uh, Oracle and how uh, she's kind of learned about it and the differences she's found between industry and being a student and learning about it. Uh, you'll then do the WCAG assessment, fairly big assessment. So what I've done is I've set aside some uh, assignment time. So week eight is going to be solely set aside to work on that so that you can hand it in on the Friday. So you only, it looks very short there, right? You've only got a week, but you've got from Thursday that lecture i'll give an overview of the assignment you've got three hours in the lab to get started so by the end of that lab session in week seven you're going to have some set up you're going to have some uh, work to do that will mean that you've done the background research that will all be done then so that this week is purely figuring out what that means and writing it up uh, so more than possible um, and as we go through, you'll see that there's some, you can go and look actually now at these assignments at any time, uh, but you'll see that there's some kind of set text that you can use. So you're not actually writing everything and there's a template for you to follow and that sort of stuff. Okay, week nine, we're going to look at current topics in HCI. So current things that people are actively researching. So 
Um, the first session is to be confirmed. The next one is going to be the AAC research group talking about their project that's involving vision computing, some AI uh, to create a speech generating device system. Um, and we have someone from St Andrews coming across to talk about uh, the usability of how people read academically. Uh, so that's a bit different, uh, but that'll be interesting. Now this big yellow box here, uh, that's a three hour lab uh, that I don't really have, well I have many things that could go into it, um, but you can have the chance that if there's something you read about when you do that what is HCI, there's something that you that you want to know about that isn't on this timetable, uh, then let me know and I'll see what we can do. That three hours is basically yours. We don't need to use it for revision because that revision is already um, in place in week 10. So, you know, let me know. Let me know if there's anything that you want to, to cover or find out some more about. This is the week you have to check your timetable, week five. So rather than a three hour lab, everyone will attend for one hour. And I'll have three classes that repeat, three workshops that repeat. Uh, so check that out. Okay, so that's us. That should hopefully give you a sense of what we're going to do in the module. Uh, there'll be some follow-up discussion about this, I'm sure, in person. Um, but please have a think about that yellow box. Have a think about what can go in there and let me know.